So many of you last video were saying that I didn't actually flip a computer. You want me to flip one? Alright, fine. Oh my god. Hey guys, and welcome to my PC flipping journey, episode 2. In our last video, we built a PC for around $580 Australian, and I just sold it for $630. It is $70 below the asking price, but it is still a $50 profit, so I'm pretty happy with that. In this video, we're going to be building another PC and hopefully selling it. What we have here is the ASUS 1660 Super. I bought this thing for only 140 Australian dollars. As you can see, it's in pretty good condition. So I'm gonna test it out in my computer, which does not have a GPU at the moment. So hopefully um, it works. So we just got the GPU installed and let's hope for the best that this turns on. Oh, that's, that's loud. Um, the fans are spinning at max right now. Come on. Come on. Oh, the fans slowed down. Come on, please. Oh, please. Yes, we're in BIOS. All right, please just load up to Windows. Yes, we're in. All right, so this GPU works. Now we gotta get the other parts so we can build a computer. Here's all the parts we're gonna be using for this build. Unfortunately, my Facebook Marketplace actually doesn't have any good deals. All the parts you can get are actually more expensive than brand new. So what we have here is the 1660 Super that we got secondhand for $140. We got a Ryzen 5 5500, a Prime B550 and a Wi-Fi, very important, and 16 gigabyte Fury DDR4, 512 gigabyte verbatim SSD, and a Antec NX200M RGB uh, my micro ATX mini mini tower case. Hopefully, this looks good. Let's unbox the case first. This thing is not budging out. <sighs> we might have to cut the top. How's it stuck in there? There we go. This is the Antec NX200M. It comes with three fixed RGB fans and is a mini tower case. So it fits micro ATX, but it's very compact and small, which is perfect for this build. I bought this for only 58 Australian dollars, which is pretty cheap. What I have here is the Ryzen 5 5500. It comes with a Wraith stealth cooler, which is really good in our situation. Next, let's unbox the motherboard. So what we have here is the ASUS B550M Wi-Fi motherboard. I chose this because Wi-Fi is really good in selling computers and I don't have Ethernet here either and Wi-Fi is just really easy to work with. What we have next is the RAM, DDR4 16 gigabyte of Kingston Fury. Lastly, we got the SSD. This is the same SSD I used in the last video, the Verbatim VI3512 GB M.2 SSD. Now let's get to building this computer with the main components. Now, first things first, let's just install the CPU. We got the Ryzen 5 5500. I'm gonna take this out. And 
as you can see, we get the CPU out. What you want to do is match the corner, the little arrow, to the arrow here on this CPU with the arrow on the motherboard. And we're just going to close the latch. There we go, we got the CPU installed. Really easy. Next thing we're going to do is install the RAM. What you want to do is align the RAM stick and the notches on the motherboard. Flip the second and fourth uh, little tab and make sure uh, you check the instructions in your motherboard because it can change. What you want to do is align the RAM stick like that. It's, what you want to do is push down with equal force on both sides until you hear a click. Click. And as you can see, it's installed nicely. We're gonna do that with the second stick on that, the other gray stick. And push down. There we go, RAM stick is installed. Next thing we're gonna do is install the M.2 SSD. First thing you wanna do when installing an M.2 SSD on a new motherboard is to install the standoff. So we have a 2280 M.2 SSD. So we want to make sure we put it in the very last slot. What we're gonna do, we're gonna get this and just screw it in there. There we go, we got the M.2 SSD installed nice and tight. Now the next thing I want to install is the cooler. This is the stock cooler that the CPU comes with. Um, let's see if I can open this, there we go. We got the cooler with pre-applied, is that thermal paste? Yes, that's pre-applied. There's pre-applied thermal paste, so we're not gonna need to use any thermal paste. With this cooler, what we're gonna do is take off these standoffs that come in with the motherboard. Let's just unscrew these little screws on this motherboard. There we go, we got, the, we got them off. So now there's actually a backplate on it, which just came off, but we don't want that to come off. We want this backplate to go back in. Just make sure that you don't drop the backplate or anything. Put the backplate in. There we go. Now what we're gonna do is install this cooler. So you wanna install it. So the AMD logo is on the left here. And we're going to align it with the little holes on the motherboard. And after that goes in, you want to screw them down. So screw them down evenly in all sides just so it doesn't break or have a weird uh, thermal paste distribution. After tightening the CPU cooler, we gotta plug in this little cable. Just like that, we got that plugged in. Just to make it look nice, we're going to just tie it in the cable, just like pull it around so there's less cable clutter. There we go. After we got the entire motherboard set up with the RAM, the CPU, the cooler, and the storage, it's time to put this in the computer. Let's open up this computer to see what's inside. Mm, very nice. You might have noticed that I haven't picked a power supply yet. That's because I'm using a power supply, which is a bit ancient, looks really bad, but it's what I have. It is a yellow mustard and ketchup then we'll take 500 watt PSU, which is enough wattage, and I know this thing works, it's just what I had on hand, and if this doesn't sell with this, I'll probably change the power supply. First things first, let's just untie these cables. Let's install the motherboard in this thing. What you want to do first is put the IO shield in. Align the IO shield with your motherboard, so it's the right way. There we go. And this motherboard is going in like this. I'm gonna put the IO shield in here. What you're gonna do is just push in and make sure it clicks in. Now we got the IO shield installed. Let's install the motherboard. After you get the IO shield installed, we're gonna install the actual motherboard. Line it up with these standoffs. Make sure there's no cables underneath. Slide it in, especially in this case, it's very compact and tight, so you want to make sure that everything is nicely lined. After you've aligned the motherboard, what you want to do is just get the motherboard screws which come with the case and screw them into the standoffs.
After you get the motherboard screwed in, what you want to do is install the case and fan cables. Now if we go to the back of this PC, as you can see, these are the cables that are controlled by, uh, the cables that connect to the motherboard to control these buttons and UI here. What you want to do is make sure you have all the cables and plug them in the right spot. First thing we have is the USB cable. The USB cable is just on the front here, align the notch to the notch on the motherboard and push it in. As you can tell that is nice and in there. Now we're going to plug in the front panel connectors. You can see here that there is a front panel, a panel there, um, header where we need to plug all these cables in. Uh, the orientation of the cables can change depending on motherboards so make sure to check the motherboard manual and put them in the right spot. There we go, we got the front panel cables all installed. The next cable is the audio and the USB cable. On this motherboard, these two are right there. Now let's install the fans. As you can see, these fans are already daisy chained together and there's only one fan output. The RGB is powered by the power supply, meaning that it's fixed and it can't be controlled with the motherboard. But that should be okay because there is a LED switch on the top where there should be quite a lot of colors. What we want to do is connect the daisy chain fan cable into the system channel fan slot, which is right there. These fans are controlled by the power supply, so I don't think there's any motherboard connectors. After we get all the fans and the case cables in the motherboard, just cable manage it a bit, and then we're going to put in the power supply. With the power supply, you just want to put it in there and make sure the fan is facing down so there's better airflow. Get the cables out of the side and align the power supply and screw it in. These screws also come with a case. There we go, we got the power supply installed. Now we gotta figure out what to do with all these cables. Now it looks pretty hard, but if you follow this, it's really not that hard. We're gonna start with the easiest cable, the 24 pin motherboard cable. These ketchup and mustard cables are terrible, but we're gonna have to deal with it. What you wanna do is get the cable and pass it through the back like this, twist it and plug it in right there until it makes a click. Oh, in this case, there is no click, but if this side safety clip is nice and on, should be secure. Next thing we want to do is install this CPU power cable. So this CPU power cable is in one chunk, it doesn't have any labels or anything, but it goes on the top usually right there. Some motherboards are two, but that's only with the high-end motherboards. Anyway, let's get this plugged in. Same way as the other clip, you just want to remove these cables out of the way first and just align it and clip it in. There we go, we've got the cable installed. As you can tell, these these mustard, yellow, and ketchup cables don't look very good. If these don't sell, I'm gonna get extension cables so we can replace them with nice looking cables. I think we've finished this computer. Now what we need to do is put the GPU in. What we need to do is take off these two brackets, which are unfortunately break off brackets, and we can't put them back in, but it should be fine. So align them up so you know how much you need to take off. In this case, we need to take off two of these brackets. You just want to push down and it hurts doing this, but you're going to pull it out. And you can't put these back in by the way, so don't do them unless they're absolutely necessary. Just wiggle it. There you go. We got it off. We're going to take off the other one. This case seems to come with a replaceable one. This is actually included with the case. Um, these might be replaceable. Anyways, let's install this GPU. What we want to do is this long PCIe slot, you want to test that, unclip it, line it up, line it up and push it. There we go. We got the GPU in. Now we're just going to screw it in, plug in the cable and hopefully this works. You're probably wondering here, that's the wrong bracket. Well, it is. I made a mistake. I'm um, sorry about that. This is future me. Um, just to let you know, uh, the replaceable brackets came in handy. So I just took off all the brackets, put the GPU in, and used the replaceable ones on the top and the bottom 
so it all looks even and has no open slots. Now finally, after we get the GPU in here, we're going to plug in the GPU cable. I somehow lost the audio for this part, so I'm just going to reenact the noises that I experienced. I'm being serious, this was the noise that I experienced. So basically, the GPU fan and the cable was hitting um, each other and it made a really loud clicking noise and I couldn't figure out what it was until I just uh, like moved the GPU a bit and it fixed itself. I thought it was a power supply, but it did end up booting, so I'm glad there was no issues there. This computer's done, let's get on to the glamour shots. The computer is done. I'm going to be listing this on my local Facebook marketplace for 650 Australian dollars. Anyway, thank you so much for watching till the end and consider subscribing because these videos do take a lot of time and effort to make. Hopefully we can get this sold in the next video. See you guys soon.